Hey guys, it's me, Lori from Tiori. Welcome back to another episode of New Santra. So let's get this thing started with Tsukuma telling us a history lesson, I guess. Remember when I told you Loma is surrounded by four towers? Nope, I don't remember that. But what about them? Mitra and his warriors built them eight years ago. With those, he managed to protect us and even made a truce with the Komodos. Without Dikiaya's help, Loma would have fallen a long time ago due to our lack of fighting knowledge. It may look peaceful inside, but the area outside the borders are still a battlefield. The war has been going on for almost 15 years. Uh, my jaw dropped. 15 years? Talk about stubborn or just plain stupid. Looking at me, Granny only smiled tiredly. She probably knew what was in my wine. My wind. I mean my mind, okay? Lori. I'm sure you have many questions now. Please go ahead and ask. Uh, okay. What caused the war? Have you tried to end the war? Let's just look at the causes first. It's hard to explain, but before the war started, avians lived side by side with the Komodos. Really? I thought they're your natural predator? I mean, they are grimaced, ate you and any kind for meat, right? They were not like that. Granny's lost her temper for a moment, but she regained her composure quickly. They are carnivor carnivores by nature, like Mitra's tribe, but 16 years ago, they suddenly attacked us and stole our blessing. That triggered the war. She took a sip of her tea and then went silent. What's this blessing? I guess she didn't want to talk about it anymore. Hmm. Calm down, Tamara. It's a sensitive topic. Okay, what is this blessing? The blessing is a gift from our goddess, the mother of all the crystals in this island. When avians and komodos were still living together, there was an incurable plague spreading across the island that slowly killed our young people. This kind of sounds familiar. Oh. We prayed to the goddess for a cure every day, and she finally answered, gracing us with her presence and gave us a blue crystal. By the next day, the little blue crystal started growing on the tree's ground and... You used them to cure the deadly plague, right? I heard this from Ashy. I never knew the blue crystals was from the goddess herself. Yes, it saved us all from the plague and because our treasure and became our treasure ever since, okay? Have you tried to end the war? She sighed and massaged her temple. Of course we have. I have tried many times, but the Komodos just won't listen to our reasonings. They won't even let me see their leader, saying that I might cast some sorcery to them. I snorted and she smiled. I know. It's just that they used to be calmer and wiser. We used to live together in peace, and I still can't believe they attacked us. How can Tamara be smiling in this situation? I know Granny Sukuma's smiling in this picture, but it looks like she's fake smiling. It's a little complicated to explain everything about this war in a single day. Why don't you wait and ask Yuta about it when he has calmed down? He should have... He should be more knowledgeable about it since he's vice captain. I don't want to talk to him for a while, Granny. You know, of course. Well, why did you say that, Tamara? Honestly, I'm also still a bit shocked with all of this. Let's just follow along with the flow and see where it takes us. Hmm. I don't know if that's the right idea. Take your time, and I hope you will choose your partner wisely, my dear. How does my partner have anything to do with this? 
Her smile was strained, and without saying another word, she went into her room. I guess that's it. They are not eager to talk about the war, so maybe later. Great. Chapter 3. Getting to know them. Ooh, month one, week one. Granny Sukuma, wait! What is it, Tamara? Uh, you see, I don't want to be a freeloader, so I was wondering if you have a job for me or not. I'm willing to do anything, and I'm quite a fast learner. Sukuma looked pleasantly at my su surprise at my confession. Why don't you help Ashi with the household chores for now? I'll give you more work later if I'm satisfied with your results. Sure, where do I start or when? You can start next Monday and work until Saturday. Just relax for today. Alright, thank you for your understanding, Granny Sukuma. You're welcome. I need to go now. Have fun, my dear. After trading quick goodbyes, I was left alone on the front porch. Now that I have a job, I wouldn't have much time to interact with other people. I need to use this free time wisely. Oh, don't tell me this is a stat racer. Spend time with Ashi, with Mitra, or take care of Rex. 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 Uh, I can't even say his name. Let's try to take care of him. We don't want him dying on us. Oh, hey, you're up. How have you been? Does your leg still hurt? Okay, give me the silent treatment. Hmm, here, I'll change the bandage for you. Rexa growled at me once before letting me touch his leg. He was still refusing to talk to me, and it didn't seem like that would change anytime soon. I sighed. <sighs> I also brought you something to eat. I'll put this here, okay? He didn't answer, only glaring at me. Well, I'll see you soon. Bye. That was awkward. I guess I skipped the whole entire week. When Monday came, breakfast was surprisingly quiet. The only ones talking were only me and Ashi chatting over some small things. Great, small talk. Granny was also silent, okay. Either she didn't notice or... Hmm. Mm. Oh, she was waiting for me to pop the question. I took a peek at Yuda. Yuda looked calmer than before. Maybe it would be alright if I asked a little. So Yuda, I heard the war is locked in a truce. How is it? Do you think the avians will win? He snorted. Of course. Ever since Loma joined the forces with Digdaya, the Komodos ran away further into the dead forest with their tails tucked between their legs. They're just too stubborn to admit defeat. Wow, I guess avians are really strong? Yeah, for example, I could lift you and Ashi as if you weigh nothing. But you look pretty heavy. Great, thanks for complimenting on my f weight. The familiar, annoying Yuda was back. But I was glad a jerk Yuda was better than an angry Yuda. We have sharp vision, quick reflexes, sturdy body, and if you forget, we can fly. Hmm. But I heard the Komodos also have super strength, steel-like skin, and acid-like saliva. How do a the avians handle that? That was a problem eight years ago. But then Mitra developed a special arrow that could wound those the bastards. We owned our archery and took advantage of our ability to fly. I guess they say higher ground is better. That's how we managed. Though they're now playing dirty by kidnapping women, women and children during the night. Yikes. If looks could kill, I would have been combusted on the spot. His hate for Komodos was as clear as day. However, what made me curious was, even though his eyes contained immense hatred, 
they also held a bit of sadness as they stared into the far distance. Maybe there was more to tell. As Yida clenched his fist, Ashley quietly brought her hand and squeezed his fist softly. Almost immediately, Yida's eyes softened. Their visual bond made me smile. It's so heartwarming. Alright, last question. What's the Avian's plan exactly? I mean, what would you do if you win the war? Isn't it obvious? We'll chase every Komodo out of our island for good. Wow, what a great response, Yuta. Yeah, just kick them all out. Where are they gonna go? Drown in the sea? If they refuse, we'll eliminate all of them. Damn, someone seems and sounds like Hitler right now. Okay, Yuta, calm your tits down. Of course, judging by his obvious hate for the Komodos, his answer wasn't really surprising. Should I ask more? Even if I hated someone really, really bad, I wouldn't want them to be killed or eliminated, per se. Should I ask more? But I have a bad feeling about this. The atmosphere was getting pretty tense. No, it's enough. You calm down. I decided it was a bad idea to push my luck, so I didn't ask anything else. We continued breakfast in the silence until it was time for us to work. Man, that's awkward. Oh, this is cute. Uh... What should I do today? Um, uh, spend some time with Granny. Granny, what are you doing? I'm grinding the herbs that you brought for me, though almost half of them are weeds. Uh, <laughs> I gave her a sheepish grin. I guess I still have some learning to do. Need some help? I want to learn more about herbs. Alright, come here. I spent the day learning about herbs from Gani Sukuma. She was surprisingly much more patient with me than she when she was teaching me Indonesian. Yeah, definitely. She was vicious when she was teaching us Indonesia. Or Indonesian. I don't think I'll ever learn how to cook. Cooking is so hard. You don't complain about my dish today. Well, maybe he can make his own dinner. I need to practice with Ashi as much as I could later. Alright, what should I do today? Um, take a look at Rex... Re oh, I can't even say his name. Look at his condition. Okay, let's do that. I should bring some more medicine for him, maybe more bandages and some water to clean off the bud, blood and probably food. With that thought in mind- oh, it's already week 3, cool. I went back inside Sukuma's house to retrieve whatever I needed to treat the injured Komodo. Secretly, of course. When I arrived, Rexa was still sleeping. I took this chance to check his temperature. I guess the fever left him last night. I sighed in relief. Whew. It's only been three weeks and he's finally kind of recovering. After replacing the makeshift blanket with a new one, I proceeded to cook him some porridge. Okay, Tamara, uh, your cooking skills, you can't even crack an egg in a pot. I'm not sure if you can do that. But guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you click that like button and also subscribe to the channel. If you want to, you know. And comment down below. See you guys soon.